Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. And I've decided to do a solo podcast. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm actually wearing a wrestling shirt <laughs> that I don't know who gave it to me. Um, when I'm speaking, people, you know, give me nice gifts and I always appreciate them. And so I try to rep this. But if you know this uh, school, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. But, you know, I'm not a big <laughs> wrestler, but just kind of cool uh, to share. But um, what I want to share is actually based on an email that I wrote um, recently, and it's uh, basically three strateg strategies to get uh, past overthinking. And even doing this podcast, sometimes I'm like, okay, I should record a podcast, I should do it. And what I actually do, I just turn on the camera and I start talking. I just start going. And sometimes that's tough. It's tough. I, I feel like I don't want to share anything. There's a little bit of a life-sucking nature of doing a podcast to not actually have any feedback you're just talking to a camera just talking to a microphone you don't know if anything's resonating you just kind of talk but the best way to kind of do something is just to do it just to move forward and not overthink it and even when I first started this podcast I remember uh, it was 2020 and it was before all the stuff happened in 2020 uh, I decided at the beginning of the year I'm gonna start a podcast and I didn't know what I was doing. So what I did is I actually plugged a um, microphone into my phone. And I just started sitting in a room and just recording some of my thoughts. And it was meant to be a totally solo podcast. I was going to do 10-minute episodes. And it evolved in something different. And now I've got, you know, all the little tools. I got, you know, the camera. I got the ring light. I'm like a TikTok influencer. You know, I got the little, you know, shout out to me for doing that. I got a little, all this stuff, right? And... Uh, it evolved, but it would have never evolved if I would have said, okay, what do I need to start? Maybe I should have this. Maybe I should have this. Maybe I should have this. And all the things that you need to start something become so overwhelming that often we over plan and then we underdo. So I just started going and then I said, hey, do I like this? Am I going to keep up with it? And I will say that a lot of times, many of the things I started, whether it was my blog, this podcast, writing a book, I just went and I'll say like, let's see where this goes. The other side of it too is sometimes I've done things that I've just gone and just started it and I didn't really like it. And so I stopped it, but at least I didn't have to wonder, right? That, Hey, you know, maybe I should have done this. Maybe I was like, you know what? I'm into this. I'm not really excited about it. Um, recently, and I'm still trying to do this all the time. I started the endurance community. I'm trying to write a, an email once a week sharing some of the insights that I've had from, you know, my own running um, experience to help other people. And my hope is, and I said this in a recent email, I don't want this to be a George thing. I want to try to create a community so that other people are sharing. Other people are sharing their insights, what they've learned, um, how they actually appreciate running, some of the things that they want to ask questions about. And I don't know if it's going to work, but I know it would never work if I never started it. I would, it would never work that way. So we'll see where it goes, but it's part of like just kind of my personality. I just want to go. And so many people I've met, they're like, I need to think about it. I need to do this. And a lot of times when you just do that over and over again, you talk yourself out of things. You just got to go. Just like I started with this podcast today. So in the email I gave, um, I gave, you know, three samples to, to kind of get past overthinking and to overdoing if, if you know for lack of a better term so the first one i actually shared is focus on starting the practice over finalizing a product so many people say to me you know what i want to write a book cool book is a daunting task right to put it all together all this process there's so much to it so here's something that you need to really think about do you even like writing because <laughs> if you don't like writing you're not going to want to write a book and it is a lot, the editing is a lot, all this process. So I'm not saying don't write a book, but I'm saying, where is your writing? Where is that process? You know, it's, it's weird because a lot of times when I've written books and I always give this advice, don't try to write um, a book, let an idea find you through your writing. And Innovator's Mindset, for example, when I started writing and it wasn't with the intention of writing the book, uh, writing a book, I started writing and I noticed I kept coming back to the topic of innovation. It was something that really lit a fire in me, something I was really passionate about. And then as I was going through this writing process, I'm like, I think I got a book here. I think there's a book here. And then 
I just spent a couple of weeks and I wrote the book and I, I wrote the book. I've done it before. Uh, Innovates of the box with Katie, her and I wrote that book two to three weeks. Um, Allison Apsey, I did enforce what makes a great principal. And it just kind of came to me one day after reading Allison's book. And then I'm like, let's go. And we just started writing it. So through the process of writing, that's where you have the ability to write a book. But if you're saying you want to write the big thing, too often because you're not doing the little thing, the practice, you'll never get to the big thing. So if you're like looking at some big goal that you want, actually think about the little things and just start going. Just kind of go through that process. And that's really, really helped me. Um, the next one I share is to embrace the five-minute rule. This is something I'm doing right now. So at first, you kind of like, I don't, I don't feel like recording this. I don't feel like doing something. And it's the same thing. Sometimes I'm like, I don't want to start a run today. I'm so exhausted. My legs are just not feeling it. So I don't, this is not my rule. This is not my thing, but I've heard it. And I, I don't, it's been shared so much that I don't know where it really came from, but I just want to reshare it, but not take credit for it. The five minute rule is like, if you don't want to do something that you've planned to do, just do it for five minutes. See how it goes. And some of my best runs have been when I've committed to the five minute rule and then I found my flow. Then I felt, you know, good. Then I felt some confidence I was going and then you just typically tend to go further. I don't think I've ever, um, you know, said, okay, just do five minutes and then not went over that and not over that process. So when you're like, if you don't feel like writing, if you don't, you know, feel like doing something and each week I actually commit to, you know, writing certain blog posts, writing certain emails. And I'll tell you, I don't always feel like doing it but I just start writing. So I plan, okay, today is my time. I'm going to just start writing, see what happens. And typically once I just kind of get going and spend a few minutes doing it, it, it kind of takes care uh, of itself. So that one, again, embrace the five minute rule. And then the last one is focus on having humility in learning. <laughs> this one, you know, a lot of teachers I've connected with over the years, they're like, what? I don't, I don't have anything to say. I don't want to write a blog. I don't want to start a podcast. I don't want to do this. Like, what do I have to say? And there is a really great uh, video. It's from Derek Sivers. And it, I think that's how I say his name. And it's called Obvious to You, Amazing to Others. And in the video, he talks about what is actually just something that you're so conditioned to, something that just is so normal to you is mind blowing to other people. So that's why you should actually share because what you see as your everyday common practice, someone doesn't even really think about it. And so to embrace this, never write from the viewpoint that you're the expert. Because when you do that, you are totally up for massive criticism, right? If you're like, well, I'm the expert on this. I know this better than anyone else. As soon as you do that, you're a target. So what I've tried to do is I just share insights from my learning. I'm not, I don't tell anyone how to do their job. Even when I speak, I, I get to keynote to teachers, administrators, all the world. And one of the things I say all the time, look, I'm not the expert here. The expert's sitting beside you. I'm just here sharing some ideas, sharing some of my learning. At the end of the day, you have to figure out the solutions. And I remember my good friend, Mike Kleba, he said, when you said that, it really struck a chord with me because a lot of times someone goes up there and they're like, well, I'm the expert. I'm the person who knows this. I have all of these accolades that back up why you should be listening to me. Whereas I'm like, hey, I'm just sharing my learning. And the thing is, there's a there's humility in that because and it can't be just a thing you say, by the way. Like that's a really important aspect, right? Don't come off humble, but actually be super arrogant. I always go into a place that, you know, I'm sharing my learning, but I'm always open to changing my ideas, changing my thinking. And one of the things I always encourage people when we have like Q and A's, have conversations, I'm like, challenge me on some of the stuff I said, because I don't know if I'm right, but I'm trying to figure stuff out. And I think that we are so worried about being criticized, but if you are in a space where you're constantly bragging, constantly just being self-promotional, yeah, you're, then criticism should come your way. But I think it's a lot less intimidating for yourself and honestly for others when you're like, look, I'm just sharing some learning. Uh, some of my most controversial blog posts I've ever written, I say to people, look, I'm just writing this to actually figure out my learning, not to kind of tell people how to do their job because I'm just kind of writing to get my ideas down. So having that humility and just seeing as everything is, hey, I'm not, I'm not 
telling you how to do your job. I'm just sharing some of my learning and you take it for what it's worth. You use it however you want. It puts a lot less pressure and it makes you more open to, to growth. But it also, you know, I think it's a really great thing to model to people, especially in the, the field of education. Are you willing to share your learning with others? So those three things again is, um, is this, uh, focus on starting the practice over finalizing product, right? Just start small. It will lead to big. The second one, embrace the five minute rule. If you don't feel like doing something, you know, five minutes, it'll, you'll, it will always lead to more. And the second one, have humility in learning. And I do want to share this quote real quick. And it's from S McNutt. And I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, this was actually, spur, um, actually got the, the, the email in the first place. I saw this picture. And I just thought it was really powerful. He said, overthinking is the biggest waste of human energy. Trust yourself, make a decision and gain more experience. There is so, there is no such thing as perfect. You cannot think your way into perfection. Just take action. So here's my challenge for you. Take this uh, podcast, write about it, share some ideas, share some of your thinking, share one strategy in the comments, even share a strategy that helps you to kind of just move to action versus overthinking or post this on Instagram, share it somewhere, tag me. I'd love to hear your strategies to get past overthinking. I hope that some of mine helped you, but if they didn't and you're still here, thanks. I appreciate it. I hope it helped you in some way. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for all you do. Take care.